Today I am in National Museum of Qatar where we can find out varieties of ways to learn and understand more about the story of the nation and its people. Therefore, without further ado, let's start babbling. I love it when you listen to me. Hello everyone, my name is Amit and you are in my vlog show. Here we can learn about Qatar ancestry and the formation of its early cities with the museum charting the country's history and progress through the centuries. Exhibition combines historic objects and contemporary influences, opening up a dialogue around the impact of rapid change. Enmark striking for cards featuring interlocking cantilever disc with a museum spanning 430,500 square feet. Designed by Pritzker Prize winning architect Jean Nouvel, the National Museum of Qatar draws inspiration from the country's history and its geology. The museum itself recreates the naturally occurring mineral crystal formation known as the Desert Rose. Occurring solely in arid coastal regions, the Desert Rose is a natural architectural structure created through the interaction of wind, sea spray, and sand over millennia. The National Museum of Qatar is a home to a multitude of archaeological and heritage objects, manuscripts, photographs, jewelry, and costumes. These objects bring to life the story not only of Qatar but also the region. Anchoring the collection is the Pearl Carpet of Baroda, commissioned by the Maharaja of Baroda, India in 1865. It comprises over 1.5 million pearls as well as diamond, rubies, emeralds and sapphires set in gold and woven into a base of silk and fine deer hide and illustrate how widely used gemstones were in the region. The museum houses 11 galleries through which visitors can witness the changing of fortune of this peninsula nation. Each gallery offers perspectives and multi-sensory experience. These are auditory through sound such as music and oral histories, visual through film and archival images, olfactory with aromas evoking particular times and places. The museum complex includes permanent and temporary galleries, a 226 auditorium, two cafes, one restaurant, one gift shop, separate facilities for school group and VIPs. I collected my entry ticket and came inside. For that, I did not have to pay any price because resident of Qatar can visit the museum for free, while student tourists will be expected to pay 25 Qatari real and adult 50 Qatari real. Let's start the journey from main lobby where we'll get permanent galleries, Cafe 875, Dalvis Al Fal Auditorium, Muhammad Jasim Al Kulefi Library, Welcome Room, Gift Shops. National Museum of Qatar is organized in three chapters beginnings, life in Qatar, and the modern history of Qatar. As I told you, it present in 11 galleries, which take visitors from the geological period long before the peninsula was inhabited through the present day. Oral history films, archival photographs, map, text, models, and the digital learning station establish the narrative along with some most dazzling treasure of Qatar history and heritage. All films are produced by the Doha Film Institute using cutting-edge technology and were shot within the borders of Qatar. The galleries are loosely arranged in chronological orders beginning with exhibition on the natural history of the desert and the Persian Gulf. Artifacts from Bedouin culture, historical exhibition on the tribal wars and the establishment of the Qatari state and finally the discover of the oil to the present. The display and the installation that explore these themes present audiovisual display and clearly selected treasures from the museum collections. This collection currently consists of approximately 8000 objects and includes the archaeologist's artifacts, architectural elements, heritage household and traveling objects, textiles and costumes, jewelry, decorative arts, books and historical documents. The museum's mission is to celebrate the culture, heritage and the future of Qatar and its people, embodying the pride and tradition of Qatar while offering international visitors a dialogue about rapid change and modernization. Since its inauguration, the museum contained material which signify Qatar's cultural heritage, such as Bedouin ethnographic materials, maritime artifacts and environmental items. Ancient artifacts, most of which are locally derived, 
are also housed in the museum. The way this museum is organized using modern technology along with ancient artifacts is an unparalleled experience. The National Museum of Qatar plays a significant role in promoting cultural understanding, preserving Qatar's history and showcasing the nation's achievements. It is a must-visit destination for both residents and tourists interested in learning about Qatar's fascinating past and its path to modernity. The National Museum of Qatar stands an iconic landmark and a symbol of Qatar's commitment to preserve its heritage while embracing innovation. I try to highlight a few of these vast collections of museums. The Caracal is a wild cat native to Middle East, Africa and Asia. Throughout there is no one left in Qatar. The Arabian ostrich lived in Arabia for thousands of years. From the late 1800s, Arabian ostriches hunted extensively for their meat, feather and skin. Then I come to Al Mezdua grave goods 300 to 400 BCE. This iron sword was found buried with two human skeletons at Al Mazrua. It would have been a prized possession buried with its owner. One skeleton was found with an arrowhead embedded in the arm, which may explain how the person died. Ras Mathak burial jar. These jars were used for burial around 2400 years ago. It is the only jar burial ever found in Qatar. These burials are common in Bahrain and Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, suggesting a connection with these regions. Petroglyphs Petroglyphs are stone carving made by people. There are an estimate 38 petroglyph sites across Qatar. Petroglyphs are challenging to date. They are normally carved on exposed rock surfaces, isolated from the archaeological remains. This means that there are few clues to help archaeologists date them. Some petroglyphs are abstract patterns such as circle curve in lines or rosettes. Experts believe this may be a kind of game other or more recognizable. The petroglyphs at al Qasar, north of Doha show a camel and a horse rider carrying spears. At Jasesaya, northern Qatar, there is a representation of boats so detailed that experts can date engraving from the boat's design. Archaeologists continue to study Qatar petroglyphs, comparing them with sites across the Gulf region and testing new scientific techniques. Oof, let me take some breath. And here we start again. Then I come across some stone tools used before 8000 BCE. In this early period, Qatar was occupied by small groups of hunters. They move regularly, hunting game with the stone tools. The climate and the sea level of the Arabic Peninsula varied greatly in this period. Sometimes the world water was frozen into vast glaciers and sea levels are low. In this period, Qatar was landlocked, hot and dry. At other times, the glaciers had melted and the global sea levels were high. Then the gulfs form part of the Tigris and Euphrates river system. The area was lush and green, supporting a variety of plants and animals that in turn to provide food for people. Now 8000 to 6500 BCE, in this period, the climate of Arabia become gradually watery and more hospitable. People continue to live in a small groups, moving regularly to hunt. New types of stone tools have been found at several early Neolithic sites in Qatar. They are smaller and more refined than earlier tools, which would have made hunting more effective. They are similar to tools found in the Eastern Mediterranean between these areas. 6500 to 3200 BCE Qatar Communities in Qatar flourished in the mid to the late Neolithic. The climate was warm and wet, the food was plentiful, hunting groups are larger and could remain in one place for longer periods without exhausting the available resources. Increasingly sophisticated arrowheads are found in Qatar from this time, suggestingly more advanced hunting techniques and there is evidence of fishing and selfish collecting at coastal sites such as Al Khor. The earliest evidence for trade in Qatar, including Ubayat pottery from Mesopotamia and Similian beads from India comes from this time. Traces of the oldest building ever found on the peninsula have been unearthed at the site of Wadi Dabayan. 3200 to 1200 BCE Qatar. At this time, Qatar had a hot and dry climate similar to today. As vegetation and game animals declined, herding sheep and goats, 
fishing and collection shellfish become increasingly important to survival. Al Khor Island in northeastern Qatar, one of the most important settlements on the peninsula during the Bronze Age. Archaeologists have excavated circular stone huts and found evidence of fishing, herding and dry production. They have also identified traded pottery from regional powers such as Dilmun civilization, Bahrain and the Kassites of Babylonia, modern day Iraq. These discoveries help us to understand the trade, regional connection and the daily activities of the people in the time. So dear friends, that is all for today. I'll be the rest to you in second part. Hope you didn't like it. So I didn't talk about like, share or comment blah blah blah. Okay. But don't forget to mention the mistakes. See you. Hello everyone, my name is Amit and you are in my vlog show.